Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1147, Animal Add-ons 3, and you can check out all of our designs at KarenBerniston.com. So we discovered that people really like to fashion our surprise ball pop-up into animals, so we added in our last release the Bitty Ball pop-up, which is a little bit smaller version of the surprise ball, plus Animal Add-ons 1 and Animal Add-ons 2. Those have been very popular, so we're continuing on with Animal Add-ons 3. It includes the add-on parts to fashion a penguin, a moose, or a reindeer. With Animal Add-ons 3, you can use any combination of two ball dies. So you could do the bitty on both the top and the bottom, or the bitty on the top and the surprise on the bottom, or you can do two surprise balls. So I'm going to do one of each combination in the video today. So I'll start with the penguin, which I am choosing to do out of two surprise balls. Following the video for the surprise ball assembly, I have assembled two of them and added black decorator trapezoids and hexagons to all the sides except for the front panels. On those ones, I used white. The one that does not have the brad is going to be the head, so I'll go ahead and firmly glue that to the body. Now, I'm using my Lineco Neutral pH adhesive in my fine tip bottle. We do sell both of those items on our website. Okay, so I have my two stacked balls to be the base of the penguin. Okay, so it's the longer of the two trapezoids that fits the surprise ball. So when you're cutting the pieces for the scarf, make sure that you're choosing the die that fits whichever ball size that you've used on the bottom, and then you'll need six of those. Then I cut four more decorator trapezoids out of white and one out of black to fashion the face of the penguin. So to do that, I'm going to use the edger dies that come in Animal Add-ons 3. I use the curved edger to cut these trapezoid corners. I need four of them, and then I'm just going to glue those onto the head. And then the other edger is the V-shaped edger that makes the top front panel of the penguin. So I've cut that out of a black trapezoid, just the upper part, and then when I glue that over the top, it'll give that distinctive shape to the front of the penguin's face. When I did the ones for the bottom, for the body, I made those a little longer, and then I wish I would have done that for these two on the bottom half of the face so that it wouldn't have that kind of zigzag look. So what I decided to do instead of taking those off of there and replacing them with other white pieces is just to use the curved edger again with a black trapezoid to make a small swoopy piece for the bottom of this one. So a little side-by-side -side comparison here. The one on the left is the one I'm working on now, and that's the one where I added that little stripe of black because my triangle pieces kind of stopped short of the neck, whereas the one on the right, I just had that curved angle do the triangle pieces all the way down. So this die that makes the penguin wings might also make some cool bunny ears. So definitely look at all these pieces and figure out what animals you can make. For the scarf, it's just a matter of putting the six trapezoid pieces up at the top and then just adding the second piece on the front, however you would like it. There is a die in the set to make the beak for the penguin. I like to use adhesive just up at the top edge so that I can have that hanging off the edge of that upper section. The Animal Add-ons 3 set doesn't include eyes because you have those small circles in both the surprise ball and the bitty ball as well as some ovals and larger circles if you want to make layered eyes. For a penguin, I usually just use the smaller ones and then add a little catch light with a white gel pen. And then the final pieces for my penguin are the feet, which I glue to the bottom. So that's how the penguin looks using two surprise balls. And if you mix the two ball sizes together, then you'll get something like this. Okay, next up is the moose, and for this one I'll make it with the bitty ball on top of the surprise ball. So this one's going to be a mixture of the two ball sizes. So once again, I've assembled both, and then I'm just going to glue the smaller bitty ball on top of the surprise ball, and I can just do that in the flat position so that I can make sure that everything lines up evenly. Okay, looking at the dies in the set that are used to make the moose and the reindeer, this one is the leg piece and it does have an optional stencil feature on it so that you can add the hoof. So you would just leave the paper in the die after die cutting and then take a black pen through the die to be able to color in the hoof. The die that creates the snout also has an optional stencil feature to put a smile 
on the front of the animal. So if you would like your reindeer or your moose to be smiling, just use a black pen through the stencil feature to add that. Okay, I am using the small circles that come included in the bitty ball for the eyes, and I just used a white gel pen to add a catch light. Now I had put some double-sided adhesive on the back of that black cardstock before die cutting so that those circles would become stickers. There are ovals included in the bitty ball, but you also have an oval in this animal add-on set. It's what's used to make the reindeer nose. So you can use that as the background of your layered eyes. And then that same oval, if you cut it out of black or maybe dark brown, you can use it behind the nostril holes when you're making a mousse so that you fill those in. And then to add the snout to the front of the animal, the mousse, I just add the adhesive in that upper section and then press the snout to it. There is a die to cut the centers of the ears and then also an ear die. And the ear die itself has a little tab at the bottom that you fold under and that's what's used to attach those ears to the head. And obviously you can explore where those ears look best at what angle. I would suggest having them down a little bit from the top so that you leave room for the antlers. The antlers also have a little small fold under tab, so you add the adhesive to that and then you can attach it to the moose at whatever angle you think looks best. If you're making a winter moose and want a scarf, then you just do the same as with the penguin. Add those trapezoids around that top edge of whichever ball is being used on the bottom, and then the tail of the scarf. And then for the legs, it's just at whatever fun angle that you think looks best, so just explore that with the legs for both the upper ones and the bottom ones. On the bottom legs that attach to the bottom of the ball, just pay attention to where the brad is if you're planning on using a brad and adding this to a project later so that you don't impede or glue down your brad in that process. And then the last piece would be the tail. Once again, there's a little tab, so you just fold that down and add some adhesive to it and then glue that onto the back of the moose or the reindeer. Okay, so that's the finished mousse used by combining the surprise ball on the bottom and the bitty ball on top. And let's compare that then to the size if you'd use just two of the bitty balls. So you can do it either way. And you can see you've got a height difference and then of course you've got a size difference in terms of how big of a card you'll need as well. Okay, and then the last animal in the set is the reindeer, which is very similar to the moose. It just has a couple little differences. And for this one, I decided to combine two of the smaller ball dies. So the bitty ball on the top and on the bottom. Okay, I did the same thing for the eyes and the antlers, but I wanted to show that with the snout, I don't need an oval behind the nostrils because in this case, I'll actually use the oval as a nose that glues over the top. So I've done a red-nosed reindeer, but it could be black or a dark brown, and I did use a little white gel pen to add a catch light. There is a die in this set that will cut three little Christmas lights, and those are a nice size. You'll be able to use those on other projects as well. What I do is I cut it out of silver and then also out of a glitter paper, and then I just trim the light section out of the glitter paper and then put it over the top. So I did that with both green and with red. Legs, scarf, and tail are going to be identical as if it were a moose. So I've gone ahead and done that, and then now I'm ready to string my lights onto a piece of twine. And I'm doing that by gluing the lights back to back around the twine. And that way, even if they flip over, they're going to look good on either side. My antler cardstock was kind of flimsy once I tied those on, and I didn't like that. So I ended up just cutting another set of antlers and gluing it over the top to make those a little bit stiffer. And in this case, most of the embellishments are actually going to fold down within the footprint of the actual bitty ball, but the feet and the face stick out a little bit, so you may need a little bit larger card because of that. So this reindeer was made with bitty ball on the top, bitty ball on the bottom, and then you can see another one here that I did with the surprise ball on the bottom. So just getting an idea of sort of the difference in height. So that's Animal Add-ons 3, and if you're new to the animals, also check out Animal Add-ons 1 and 2. Another way to use the animal add-ons is just to use them with your circle dies to create flat versions of the animals. So here's what I did with the two penguins. I actually stacked them on top of each other inside a card. So you can definitely explore all sorts of fun things making these animals. It wouldn't even have to be the same animal stacked on top. You could do it with two different ones. Okay, so check out this fun card by Kelly Booth. She's used a belly band to keep it closed. And then when it pops up, 
She has a moose inside who is chomping down on a little gingerbread cookie and a candy cane. And look, she even put little crumbs at the mouth. She used a brad between the head and the body as well so that the head spins independently of the body. Speaking of making flat versions, here is a cute little Christmas tag by Karen Aiken. Frances Byrne made a reindeer into a Christmas ornament, so it flattens down for mailing and then it can be hung on the tree. And I love that her little reindeer is holding some candy canes and a stocking from our new holiday charms. And then here's a great gatefold card by Lois Bach featuring the penguin. Animal add-ons 3 start shipping the first week of November 2020. Check on our website or a lot of your favorite local or online retailers for pre-orders. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.